is fourth house, what it's like to be alone and having to think for ourselves and um, stuff like that. So I'm glad that like we both have that, like that Piscean fifth house parenting, you know, that the spiritual free flowing, that love, that water, that emotion. Um, it's such a good house to have as your fifth house. It really is. It is good. Like, I feel that way too. Like the way I'm going to confront issues with her, it's, it's going to be just different than everyone. I don't know. I'm an Aquarius son, so I don't like to be, even with like the birthday post, be like, I don't know. I don't know if it, what it is in my chart, but I, I just like holidays so much. And I, I just like everything that society pushes us like, oh, this is my darling child, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, this is like, I'm lucky I get to be your friend and your guide in life. Like, that's how I'll like post it, dude. I'm like, woo, like, it's not, I don't know. It's just my perspective on it is so different. I feel like we should all change our perspective and then the next generation will be better and they'll have kids and that'll be better. And that's the only way we'll break all the ancestral trauma and society brainwashing that we've had. I believe it's possible. Oh, oh, oh no, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. What are you saying? <gasps> I don't forget. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's going back. Do you believe, okay, because I had this conversation with another Scorpio Rising and they did not agree with my point. So I'm intrigued by how you will react to this. Do you believe that if one person thinks they can change the world and if they have unconditional love, that that unconditional love and positivity weighs out what people in power of a evil descent are doing? Do you think that will outweigh them, one person or a few people that are in a positive, unconditional, loving vibration that believe, yeah, I can change the world? I can, we can change it. Will that change? But even if there's people in power that are in the government that are having like, you know, underground sex rings and abusing people, can that change that? Do you think that is possible? I think, you know what? I'd like to, I would like to think so. But um, I think that if I try to like, think that like, if as long as I'm unconditionally loving, then those people in power, those governmental figures, those Bill Gates, those um, all those like evil people, right? I think that they will have no effect on me personally. You know what I mean? Like, I think that uh, as long as I do what's right for me, you know what I mean? And I show unconditional love um, to the people in my life and those who aren't in my life, I feel like it'll just, it'll keep me protected like a spiritual force field. So I don't know if it will necessarily like change those people but i don't know i feel like if we all do it collectively though however then then yeah it'll definitely overthrow that yeah change the world that's what i'm saying because i'm like dude it only takes one person so like you're over there in new jersey and you're like yeah i'm gonna be an unconditional love i'm gonna choose to transform i'm gonna choose to stand up for myself and you know start parenting kids different or you know just living my purpose, just existing, you yeah. know, then, and then I'm doing that over here. And then another person doing that, another state, another, and another, another. And then it, I don't know. I, I saw some things that like the great conjunction, even people that are of older generations are like seeing how the government is fake. And like a lot of this stuff is fake and just like not the move. So more and more people waking up, it, it's going to be impossible for it not to change. Exactly. And, and it's, it's crazy because we are the like ultimate innovators. I'm not trying to put ourselves on a high horse, but <laughs> where we, and that's why people, some people at work and stuff, they may hate us or despise us because we like, okay, the old instruction manual, I, I see where, why you guys put that in place, but I can see how you can also improve it. Yeah. You want this cooked this way, but it's much better if you do it this way yeah like no like this is the law this is this is um <laughs> this is the way it was always done and it's like nah nah i see innovation like i see where things can be changed where i can destroy this and then like go about rebuilding it up again like the instruction manual you know what i mean like the old um textbook from 25 years ago right. it's so outdated it's so outdated you know so that's why i mean I don't know where I was going with that, but 
<laughs> That's so weird that you say that because I, I think I just said that in my Leo Midhaven videos. Like, you you think that it like I like to do things how I want to do it, and people may see, or maybe the Scorpio Rising videos, like people may see, all right, do it this way, but I'm seeing this is the right way because if you do this, and this is gonna fall down, this is gonna start problems. Like, I even got into a like an argument with some woman because she was saying, oh, we need to do it this way. And intuitively, like she wanted to put snacks in an area where we'll just go get the kids and we'll put them down. And then we'll go all, all of us teachers will go up, get the snacks at the same time. And I was like, what? This doesn't make logical sense. We're going to bump into each other. So I, and then she thought I was like challenging her as like head teacher, but I've been there longer than her. And I was like, and I was like, and she's like, okay, we're going to do it. And I was like, no. And then she's like, you're going to do it. And I was like, you're going to do what you want. I'm not going to do that because that's not the right way. And she was like, oh, and I was like, oh, like, like, first off, don't tell me what to do. But then second off, like, I see, I don't see like a, a problem being solved in the immediate, immediate moment. I see the problem being solved as a whole. I see whatever challenge will come up and that's why i'll go to like the best one out of all of it because i see like the details and then i see intuitively what could happen so i picked the best route where some people they're like oh this is solve it now so it's like do this one and i'm like but what about a b and c what about like a year from now what about a month from now you know yeah that's yeah. weird you live in new jersey have you heard of the dolan twins the dolan twins no. the dolan twins he said no Dude, yeah. you should you should follow them. They're Scorpio Risings. Really? Like I looked it up. I don't know. I listened to their I watched I started watching their videos like a year ago when I just started my spiritual awakening and I was honestly like depressed. And they're they're Sagittarius sons, so they're like just having fun. And I was like, oh I'm gonna watch this, it'll make me happy during my lunch break. And then I started listening to their podcast, dude, and they went deep. They're like talking about everything, and now they have a clothing line that's like spread positivity on their hoodie and it goes like this like oh, positivity awesome. and i was like oh that's so dope and the way that they're impacting the world it, it really intrigued me but i know that they used to live in new jersey but then they moved to california so when you said that i was like the dolan twins did you go to school with that? <laughs> which is so annoying to like ask someone like oh someone lives in tennessee do you know them like obviously i wouldn't know anyone like method especially scorpio right i'm like nah stay away from people but dude they're really if you listen to the way they talk, they have that Scorpio rising, like intensity, intensity to them. Yeah. They're really deep. No, nah, yeah, I feel that. But yeah, New Jersey is a fucking small ass state. Like, really? Yeah. It takes me like two hours to drive through our whole state. Um, what? Well, maybe like two and a half, depending on the day. Dude, but. that's weird to think about. Memphis is big, at least where I live, like, I don't know, dude, you can, like, go every area, there's, like, our city, it's, there's, like, the upper, and then the lower parts, and then, like, the middle, and then, like, each place you're driving, it just, I guess it looks small, but there's, like, different little diverse people in, like, every city, but I'm tired of it, dude, I'm ready to move, I'm probably moving within a few months or so, I want to go to places that are more creative, more open, more content creative, more people that are like going for their dreams every day. And they're not like, oh, I don't want to be the the rare person anymore, like the the outliner of the society. I want to be more where people are doing the same thing I am. Not the same exact, but at least they're all following their dreams. So it's a higher support group. And I'm like, yeah, every day I wake up, yeah. But I know I'm going to be the one to like, hype myself up anyway but it's nice to have that surround. yeah and you know what's uh what i looked into i was gonna go for a full-blown scorpio transformation and straight up move out of the country there's this um i think it's a you can get it on your phone now but if not you can always visit the website it's called work away and um you basically like the program it's like the website has a whole bunch of programs you can sign up for and um like you at first you have to like you have to have a passport and everything but um they'll even sponsor you for it really and yep and uh you have to get like a list of vaccines in certain countries that you go to though um i was gonna go to freaking paraguay i don't even know if that's how you pronounce it but yeah dude yeah and um 
but it's like you you do volunteer work for a little bit and then eventually um you start getting paid after i think like the four week period is up but you you're only going there to uh basically work and then they'll even give you like a place to stay too and i was highly considering that it's called work away whoa yeah dude the synchronicity i literally was talking about this today to one of my parents i was like yeah i don't know where i'm gonna move but i'm gonna get sponsored they're like sponsored how does that work and i was like blah, blah, blah. like i just made up an excuse i'm like oh this is how. but i was thinking in my head i looked it up i was like how do i get sponsored so dude thank you so much i'm about to look this up after this podcast because i was like i asked that to the universe i was like okay, well, I don't know how to do it this way or that way, but there has to be a way to get here. So if it's through this, help me find out the what I need to do to get there. And then you said work away. Oh, yeah. The synchronicity, which never would have happened if we hadn't had, had this podcast, dude, or if I hadn't seen your video even. Yeah, I feel like maybe a like month or so you may be in Paraguay. <laughs> yeah, right, dude, like the universe just like ooh, that's yeah. so cool dude i feel like scorpio risings we do that too a lot like we help we're that person that that helps people find the information they need we might not know all the answers right away but we're like oh i know that you can go to this website or you can go talk to this person we're like the connector like that that in that game connection like the middle yeah. part that connects it yeah like the mediator yeah the mediator dude that's like oh that's so cool. Awesome. <laughs> Yay. So you said um you were interested in skateboarding. I used to skate uh like I think I stopped honestly like once I got my car and I started driving. Right. Oh no. Yeah. Like I could never really do too many tricks though. Like I think my best trick was I know this podcast isn't about skateboarding, but no, that's true. Yeah, I think my best trick was like the big spin. You know what that is? Uh-oh. -uh. It's like a pop shove it 180. So you're like, you're going with the pop shove it. And it, it looks crazy. It looks crazy. But that was like my best trick. Dude, that looks cool. That's it. Uh, dude, I want to learn how to do tricks so bad. But I, honestly, I have a skateboard that's from Amazon. Like I have to upgrade so bad because I'm like, it's like falling apart. Well, not falling apart, but it's not, it's not built to be doing the tricks that I want. But I have so much energy inside of me and like, Mm -hmm. the only way to get it out like sometimes i'm like that tension's there i was like i gotta go skateboard so i'll just like whoop, whoop, whoop. and it's very it's almost like meditating dude when you're therapeutic and like not even if you're like trying to do tricks or like out of actual skateboard park if you're in your neighborhood and you're just like drifting and you have your headphones in like it really clears my head it helps me get out of my virgo moon because i feel like scorpio rising that's okay like i got that the aquarius uh maybe that stems from the overthinking but the Virgo moon the overthinking like turns into my detriment it turns into over analyzing to the point I can't turn it off sometimes so I'm like all right get this I grab my skateboard and, like, whoop, whoop, and that at least just it gives me something to focus on and then I feel happier doing it I learned how to skateboard on a freaking <laughs> Oh, yeah. I learned how to skateboard because I was angry at my sister because I lived with her and she's an Aries moon and like oh and then I was like I can't oh, I can't kill her she's my sister so I would I, I went outside dude, and she had this this piece of board and like you know movers when they have like a dolly it's almost like a dolly but it was just a straight square and I like text her like hey can I use this this piece of wood she's like what the wood on wheels on four, like eight <laughs> wheels I was like yeah She's like, all right, bet. And I literally pretended it was a skateboard, put in my music, and I was like, whoop, whoop, like on this tiny pathway. And I just manifested that because I like looked over and over a skateboarder, skateboarder. And my friend bought me one like a couple months after. And because I had used that board over and over, I just jumped on the skateboard, like, yeah, she's like, you told me you did skateboard before. And I was like, bro, like I've been practicing on a piece of wood. I've been watching skateboard videos. I've been visualizing it. So like, and like I fell off the the square over and over. Oh no, did it cut off? Uh, no, I can't hear you. All right. Oh, okay. I was like, what, what is he saying? Yeah, my bad. Um, but yeah, I remember one time when I, uh, when I was like heavily involved in skateboarding, it would, I got into it, I think around like the winter time. So it was like snow on the ground. I literally asked like my dad, 
to uh, move his car and like get that like one dry piece of like concrete, you know what I mean? Just to skate on. Oh yeah. It was that your first time skating or you just sort of like, I need something to skate on. Yeah. Cause it was like my first time actually like committing to it and actually trying to learn. And it just so happened to be in the winter time. Uh. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, dude, I feel like that's the power of your mind though. If you think about it enough and then you keep trying it and like, that's the thing. Cause I was telling her, I was like, you can't be afraid to fall, dude. Like when you're skateboarding, you just like got it. it <laughs> and when I went to the skate park, cause I had a lot of people tell me like, Oh, like you can't skate like this. Blah, 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 blah. What if you like, where's your protective headgear and stuff. And I was like, dude, if I'm skating and I fall, I'm freaking happy. Cause that means I'm a skateboarder really experiencing it and falling. And I did fall. Like I busted this. Shit. Well, you can't see it, but I busted like, I went out, I was like, all right, how do I go down a ramp? And this guy's like, okay, you have to have full commitment and go fast. I was like, all right, cool. I went down, I was like, ah! and then I fell at the bottom. I was like, oh, and I like busted. I was like sprawling, and I got up, I was like, ah. <laughs> Dude, like, that's like, literally, if you change your perspective on shit, like, instead of trying to be perfect, like, oh, my God, like, I got to figure it out. People are staring at me. What if I fall? It's too, like, oh, my God, like, I'm fucking on a skateboard, dude, this shit, like, manifests into a physical object, I'm out here doing this, like, like, that's how I feel about YouTube, I don't, I don't look at it, like, oh, I have to have the best quality content, and I have to say everything right, and I have to have a good camera, now I'm like, dude, I made a fucking video that's gonna be there forever, and I'm a YouTuber, that's amazing, I create a piece of art, it's art, it's amazing, I'm out here, like, meeting people, even if, like, I, I don't end up dating someone. If I go on a date with someone, I'm like happy I got to experience it. I'm like, whoa, I'm really out here. Like, that's how I look at life. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I feel the same way. You know what's so funny though? Like I had growing up, like my like my father has a Virgo moon. And um I like I used to like absolutely hate growing up with a Virgo moon like because he would like nitpick every little thing that I did wrong you know what I mean but then growing up and I as I found out um, about astrology I feel like at least through him I don't know if it's through every Virgo moon but I feel like that's just how they show that they like love and care about you through yeah. telling you what you're what there is wrong you know what I mean I don't really view it as like they say like Virgos in general, just like nitpick. I view it as like, that's just how they show love. Like they want to help you. They generally like mean it like out of love. You know what I mean? Ooh, that's hard for me, dude. Cause I'm like, oh, these Virgo sons need to listen. Cause I'm a Virgo moon. I'm so like, uh. but I feel like it's not what you say to people. It's how you say it to people. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, like in my video, I talk about it like, yeah, I'm a Virgo moon, but I, it got to a point where I drove someone away that was living with me. And it's not completely because of that, but I was so like, we have to organize the cups like this and like blow up. Over and I'm like, dude, you can't do that with people. And ever since that experience, I had that. And I was like, all right, cool. Like I can control how my room looks, how the kitchen looks, maybe when the person I live with isn't here. But other than that, like if they want to be a slob, like they did, that's out of my control, dude. And mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's going to be difficult with me. I feel not difficult, challenging with a child. Cause like, I do see that. Like I see all the details, man, like, Ooh, all the time. So not being that way with her, but it is a way that we like care because we want you to look the best. We're like, Oh, like, I don't, I don't want you looking out here crazy. I want to like fix your hair make sure you look good and not post that of you looking bad. So I can, I can see both sides of it. I don't know how, I feel like my dad might've been a Virgo moon, but he won't tell me. He doesn't believe in astrology. He won't tell me his birth time or whatever. I have two Scorpio son parents. So that was a mess growing up. <laughs> I was like, Ooh. intense. Yeah, I don't know. And I remember watching a, uh, what's the YouTube channel? You know, Party Trick Astrology? I don't think so, but it's maybe, cool. maybe. I've watched a lot of astrology channels. I forget their names sometimes. Yeah, it's like the, uh, the two girls. It's, um, I already forget their names. Dang it. But they had pointed out something about Scorpio risings in particular that, um, like, when we smile, it's always, like, a half smile, like a grin. No, <laughs> I just noticed that. I just noticed that. No, dude, I'll be doing the smirk so much. Like, literally, in all my pictures, too, I'm like, I'm like, either I'll, like, smile or I'll, like, nod at all. I'm like, nod. I'm like, the smirk. Yeah. 
Yeah, but like it's actually like my it's actually my actual smile. Like oh, is it actual? I don't know. What's my I don't know. Dude, like I have like like kind of like smile dimples, not like round dimples, but like smile. And I feel like I pass that on to my daughter. She has like one dimple right here. I'm like, oh, it's so cute. But like I see that Scorpio within her too. Cause like when she and like I understand she's a baby, she's two, but when she does something. She'll look at me and she'll be so like intense. And I always almost want to like control her. So I can kind of see how my parents, because my sister would say, like, I have younger sisters, like six younger sisters, and they would complain about my parents. And like one of my like closer younger sisters, like, you don't know how bad you had it. Rachel was a black sheep. They were like intense on her. They wouldn't let and they were like, oh. But I did see that and I feel that happen. Like, they would single me out sometimes because they're like, well, you're the oldest. But that wasn't what it was because my other sister was a Capricorn. She acted a lot more serious than me and was always mistaken for the oldest. They wanted to control me because when they looked in my eyes, they saw, like, power. Because I look at my daughter and I'm like, oh, you intense. And I'm like, what the? You're a baby. And, I, like, uh, 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 my ego part wants to, like, control that. I'm like, oh, well, I'm the boss. What do you see? And then, but then I'm like, whoa, nah. But I, I can see that perspective, like, maybe. And that doesn't make it right. That never makes, like, abuse right or belittling someone or actually attempting to control someone right. But I can see why now, like, flipping that perspective. When you look at someone with Scorpio and you're like, you can just feel, like, the power off them. It, it's almost because we're, like, scared of our own power, I feel. so. Not me personally, but, like, collective. Mm-hmm. I really like I feel so bad for some of my subscribers that um I, I feel that have that Pluto in the um in the other houses like the 12th I I, I want to make a video for them and I feel like we should as well but like because we're you know we do talk about Pluto in the first and and because we have it but I don't want to leave any of the Scorpio rising I know dude I don't want to leave anyone out like I'm gonna yeah. I don't know if you've heard of Will Harrison on YouTube. You would actually probably really like him. He has a Cancer Moon, I feel. It is Cancer Moon, isn't it? I'm trying to think. It might be Cancer Sun. It is probably a Gemini Sun, Aquarius, Mercury, Cancer Moon. Anyway, he has very nurturing energy. So, like, I feel like you can relate. But, dude, uh, his, his videos, he does them on everything dude like so in depth he'll be like sagittarius sun scorpio moon Cat compatibility between like an aquarius and a leo and, a, and like i don't want to leave anyone out too and it's been and it's like difficult for me because i don't i like to learn about myself so i'm like oh, i'll do a video on virgo moon scorpio rising aquarius sun aquarius and aries aquarius and like leo like people I've been friends with because it's easier when I'm observing like people right around me and then I'm like looking up on my like, all right I don't really know a lot of like Pisces sun Leo moon people mm -hmm. I don't know but I think we should do like Pluto in the different houses because every yeah. person matters and everyone is dealing with a lot and to know that they're not alone just to look up their own placement and to find it is like so empowering for me like change my life maybe you can find my leo and then my queries mercury like understanding that like i'm not like some crazy mess that that's just how i communicate and then when i'm with other aqua mercuries and they communicate in the same way it's so endearing i'm like oh yeah. like this is how people see me and i see you in such like a bright like happy way so that's that's that that's a good feeling mm -hmm. yeah no I, I feel that way too it's just like I need to really get cracking on those like studying the houses and like how Pluto affects them before I even try to put myself out there talking about their placements. Yeah. Um, you know, because I feel, I don't know, I feel, I really do feel as though I'm leaving them out. And uh, one thing though, I do know about like Pluto and the 12th people is that like it's, uh, their, their Pluto, believe it or not, in my opinion, my personal belief is that their Pluto power is a bit, more stronger than having it in the first because i feel like that pluto energy is just being pushed out all the time it never gets a chance to really build up and whereas if it's in the 12th house that pluto energy is stored and locked away like kept 
like all the way down the 12th house you know what i mean and then it just explodes like in like just that plutonic energy went through spirituality through meditation through all that type of stuff so i don't know i could be wrong but that's just my opinion what is what is the 12th house represent again i i think the 12th house like represents the spiritual life and um like the things that you need not even necessarily want but need um yeah. so i what is it our 12th house is libra right believe so i'd have to like uh, so i'm like i wish i had that little thing behind me i could look and be like that's the 12th house <laughs> does or, it uh, say it on there yeah um one, libra six. yeah it's libra libra yeah nice well yeah, they're like yeah i don't know i was i was like thinking about all that like pluto and twelve thousand. i want to I went over, okay, how to be an astrologist and I looked at certain videos of it, but it's so in depth and there's so many things I want to do, but I want to get back into it because I did know what each house represented. I was like, all right, your fourth house, that's like the mother, your your home, um, your family, stuff like that. Your first house is your identity. Your 10th house is your career, where you shine the brightest. But then I like forgot almost all of them. So I'm like, oh no. So if I go back into it, yeah, because there are a lot of people with, Pluto in different houses and it'd be cool to give them kind of a rundown of you know their challenges and what makes them special how to empower them because I feel that's part of my purpose I don't know if you feel the same on your purpose but mine is to empower people to give them self-awareness and I don't ever want to be like okay like follow me like I have a like like this is what I learned about myself dude and you can do anything and empower yourself like the, the fastest way to like self-empowerment is self-realization, self-awareness, knowing yourself. Because when you know yourself, you're not looking for advice. You don't care what people think about you. People can say, oh, you're this or that. And you're like, I know who the fuck I am. I know who the fuck I am. I don't care. Like, you can think that about me. You can think that about me. You can think this, but I know who I am. And when we don't, that's when we start to believe others and, you know, society brainwashing that too. But Yeah. It's empowering for me. It's just such a crazy damn like lifeline to live because like school, you know, the rising sign also, you know, represents the lifeline. And it's like, dude, like there's been times I said it in my Scorpio rising part one, but there's literally been times where I I thought I was going to die. Like whether it be at, like uh, some sort of uh, illness that I went through or some kind of, um, I don't know, it could be anything from having a crazy ass party, a crazy night. But I, I feel like, having that like there's been times where you literally thought you were gonna yeah die. dude like no no i've had that i've, I've had a lot of near-death experiences like a almost a drug overdose but it wasn't intentional it was like i was really messed up but well actually kind of well i was really afraid i just like took them and they weren't even like i don't even know what i think they were for like an animal i think it was like my friend was giving me like pills for like and i just like took them all like, ah! and i felt so bad and i just like remember looking up at the light because i was like throwing up and nobody like cared dude i was like in a little bathroom i was like looking at the light i'm like god i was like look if you save me i'll do something with my life <laughs> like, bro. and the next day i woke up and i was like oh my god i'm alive but then a lot of times like driving and accidents like i've been in an accident where like I was like driving and then like the pole was right here. And then like, I went like right there and then the car starts moving up and like, Oh my God, dude, like you would be dead if you hit that pole. And my Scorpio rising ass was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> I just like moved on. And like, oh, yeah. But I've, I've also had an experience where I was like shot at and it was like, like a few inches above my head during that time when it happened. And like, that night was like when I realized I was like dude I almost died tonight like this isn't even exaggerated like that science that's a few inches above how why am I here what the and it kind of I feel like Scorpio rising it kind of makes us a little bit feeling like we're almost invincible feeling like we're almost like gods and like taking more risk is really like, oh that didn't kill me like but on both ends of it too I noticed that Scorpio risings are either really um, conservative when it comes to uh, like drugs and or they're really liberal. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm more like 
you know what, like do whatever the, the hell you want. You know what I mean? Like it's your body, your choice type deal. Like if, if you want to do that, I can't stop you. You know what I mean? Like it, I'm not someone who's, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that, but I know some Scorpio risings who don't even drink, you know, like on the weekends. And um, I don't know, they're just really, cause they like to be in control of the environment. For me, I, it lets me let loose, you know? Yeah. So I think we're all different. I think like each of us Scorpio risings, we have things we like to control. Cause like me, I gave up drinking, drugs, smoking, and then codependency. So, and relationships like being single too for like actually like happily chosen single not like i'm single Ah, gotta find somebody now like single single so i gave up all those things because i saw that they weren't being productive for me because i overindulged and i got out of control with my emotions and i was like dude i don't like this person i'm being when i'm drunk i'm very angry or i'm very like i'm like crying a lot or sometimes things happen to me because my judgment is impaired and i don't I don't like that. And I stopped that too. And I do like to be in control of my environment. That way I'm like one step ahead. I'm like, all right, cool. If someone's trying to like add some type of way, I'll be sober. So I'll just put, like, but it before I just didn't care. And like, I was like numbing my pain. And also it forced me to confront myself because when I didn't have, when I couldn't drown my pain in alcohol or I couldn't do drugs and I couldn't even like grab a cigarette when I was feeling anxiety I was like, all right, what the fuck are you going to do now? Like, dude, like, like even at a point when I didn't have my car working, I was like, you can't even go escape. This is forcing you to confront your emotions, forcing you to confront your trauma, like who you are and like cry it out, dude. Cause I feel like crying for Scorpio rising is really tough. It's really like, yeah. it's just hard, dude. It was hard for me. And then like for Scorpio rising, I knew like, I'd never, ever seen him cry except for like one time and like, year and a half we've been friends dude like and that the time he was crying i didn't even know what to do like yeah just like and it and it's like effed up because like i know what to do in that situation i'm like oh it's okay they're there but like i was like like shocked and i feel like that's how other people would feel about me maybe not as much now but if i like I, i have cried before in front of like people when i would drink and they didn't know what to do either they wouldn't even like hug me or anything they'd be like Oh my God. They're kind of like, Oh my God, is this person going to die? There, there's like water coming out of their face, like too much. But oh. that was one thing I got over last year. I was like, all right, cool. Crying is productive because you're getting all those freaking emotions out of your physical body. That way you can move on and you can heal it. If it builds up and builds up, it's going to come out in like, I don't know, someone's going to, it's going to come out in a small way and then you're going to get really embarrassed or it's, it's it's not it's just not good to keep it all in so that's one thing i've learned yeah see that's something i still need to learn um because you know being a cancer moon my i have that shell and then it's also in the eighth house so it's like i don't want people to see me in my emotional state at all no, no, like, no. <laughs> i don't even want to see it oh. you know? but um yo it's uh, i don't know yeah that's definitely something i still need to learn but that feeling that you get after like um <laughs> a good cry you know yes I mean? like, uh, you know it's good you know you sit there afterwards after you're done crying and you're just like you don't feel like you're in complete presence i try to achieve that feeling every time i meditate yeah that that that's strange that that peace i felt that like a month or two ago because i was really upset over a situation and I just straight up cried. And I cried about like everything that happened, all every betrayal, all of it. I just let it all out. And then like, boom, I was almost like hit. Like sometimes after you're crying, it's just like, oh, I feel some peace. But I was like hit with like a big thing of peace. And I truly believe it was my angels and spirit guys saying like, look, you're good. Like, we're going to help you. It's all good. And I like felt that peace. And I was like, wow, this is nice. And I haven't had that since. But I think it was because I was so in that moment I was so like I was in so much pain like physical I I really actually like I I don't know if this is like a Scorpio rising thing but I like prefer physical pain versus emotional pain if someone's like oh yeah and I'm like all right whatever (laughs) but if it's like emotional like if I break my arm I'm like even skating like dude like my my ankle got so swollen I like I try to 
still skate on it. I was like, I don't feel it. Like when it's really cold, I won't put a jacket on sometimes. I'm like, I don't feel it. I feel like numb to it. I'm like, ah, whatever. Yeah. But emotional pain. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> because I feel like it, it, it like it, it, because of the Scorpio rising, it's 10 times as intense. Whereas some person they're like, they feel like they're going through a breakup. But we don't feel the end of it. We feel like in a dark abyss, like a tunnel, like our yeah. whole life is ending and like everything is building up. And it's just like, a, it's like being in a movie. So when I feel emotional pain, I'm like, oh God, make it stop. Anything to make it stop. Like, ah. Yeah. What, um, uh, what sign is your Pluto in though? Like, It's in uh, the first house. I believe it's in, oh, wait, wait. Actually, I looked this up the other day. I believe it's in Sagittarius. Even though it's in Scorpio first house, yeah, well, yeah. I don't know how that works, but it's it said like Pluto, Sagittarius, Pluto in first house, Scorpio though. Yeah, no, I get it because that's that's what mine is. Um, okay. I <laughs> like, <I> have, <laughs> Yeah, no, I have that too. It's a uh, like I feel bad for the people who have like uh, Pluto in Scorpio, um, but I know what. Scorp like having Pluto and Sag, our transformations, I feel like are like our painful transformations. They're not like something that'll last us like a month or or like I feel like if something like really bad happens to us since it is in Sag, it tends to like we tend to recuperate a lot quicker. Um I don't know, it's just my opinion. But um Another thing that a lot of people may not know about Scorpio rising is like having that six house Aries. Um, I can get like ext- extremely inebriated at a party and I'll be like the first one to wake up that next morning. Like nothing, ha- like I can recover so quickly. Like, yeah, where others will be like, like asking for like Gatorade and, and all that like water and just lay in bed all day I'll be up helping people and Dude, like that's uh, so weird like I don't I don't feel that way with like alcohol I've always been like a lightweight like it was difficult for me to recover but I do feel that way like when I have my daughter do like I push her out and like I think like an hour or like two hours after I was she was in a NICU so I like got up and I like walked over there and they're like what are you doing? I was like, I'm going to go visit my daughter. They're like, you just, and another lady, she was like having her husband, like hold her and like walk. And she was like, you just had your baby today. And I was like, yeah. She's like, how are you? What? what? And I was just like, I'm going to go see my baby. Like whatever. I just popped her out. It's not a big deal. But I feel like Scorpio risings were very like physically strong, even if we're small or we're on the slender side and we're not like necessarily muscular. We're very, physically strong like i don't know we have this like super strength like we can go through intense shit and people are like like birth like i gave birth and i was like Ooh, like recover fat and i think it's, it has to do with our mental strength because the body and the mind are connected so when we go through a lot of trauma or mental strain over and over then like physically we're like ah oh, this this if you don't think it's difficult then it won't be whereas other people they see it in a different way a different perspective therefore it is yeah um i like to believe that there's well i don't like to believe this but i believe that there's a trade-off when a scorpio rising is put into the world someone close in the family dies around the same time that the scorpio rising is born um oh bro whoa that's weird because i was born february 17th and my grandpa was born i think february like shortly like the 16th or the 18th and he passed away a few years ago and it didn't happen when I was born but like every time it's around my birthday I almost feel guilty because that's like Mm -hmm. his birthday and he's no longer here so I could that's so weird I never thought of that Uh, yeah that's how it is and and you know what that's still around the same time frame of you being born like what happened with uh like uh I think it was my great-grandfather who had died literally I think a week later after I was born um or two weeks or maybe even a couple of days but very relatively close to my birthday um but I don't know no I could see that trade-off dude because like I know we go through being very close like through our own near-death experiences but also death surrounds us like I saw a lot of like death like uh my dad's 
grandpa had died when I was younger. I remember that was really intense, but it was really quick, like secretive because Scorpios are all about secrets. And I, I think that's why I feel like I'm very reserved too. I don't know if it's because my parents are Scorpios, but they're very like, everything was secretive. So whenever I do something, I'm like, I don't show like, even on this podcast, I'm like, I've said too much. <laughs> so it's something I'm getting over, but I like, I grew up with that. So I'm very reserved. Like, I feel like information is almost like, it can always be used as blackmail. Once something's out there, it's out there. So I'm very secretive with it. But I could see that trade off thing because I, I've recently had a dream. You know, I'm psychic and I have like clairvoyance, clairaudient, clair, clear knowing. Like I feel things and then I see things and then I hear that. Yeah. So I have like visual downloads as well as like picking up a message through a song. And then I feel, I can like feel someone's emotion sometimes when I'm around their energy, like they have sadness or they're happy or even like a physical ailment, dude, like reading their tarot cards, I can pick that up. But I had a dream last night and I've been having really weird dreams lately. I don't remember what the first one was, but the second one, I was in a room and there was something to do with the baby. And I was like, oh, look at that little baby, whatever. And then I saw three people like sitting at a table and they're looking at me and I didn't know who the first two people. And then I like turned around and it was my grandpa and I knew it. And then it was kind of like lucid dreaming. Like I knew I was in there and I was like, Hey, and he was like, and I was like, Hey, and then I was like, Aquarius. I said something like dumb, like Aquarius. Yeah. Cause he's an Aquarius. And he, like, then he just smiled. He's like, and I don't think he said anything or maybe he did. I don't remember, but I like just saw him and I was like comforted. And it just felt like I was in there, dude. And I truly believe it was like my angels, like sending me that communication. It must be like something intense about to happen to me. Not intense, but a big change. Because the last time I saw, I've only seen my grandpa like twice in two dreams. And the other time, it wasn't even him. He just sent like lights in my whole room because he was Catholic. So like my whole room lit up with like gold and red and yellow and all these beautiful colors and I knew it was him even though I didn't see him so I saw him last night and I was like whoa but yeah dude like I feel like Scorpio Risings we get a lot of downloads through our sleep through our intuition if you write them down you will be like surprised by them yeah totally for sure I mean I have I'm so jealous because like I haven't had a like supernatural experience like I have like meaningful dreams but when it comes to like people who uh claim to uh see like see spirits and stuff I haven't had um now I see like uh numbers like the same numbers but that's as far as uh like uh supernatural things go you know what I mean I, I will say this that uh, um I haven't seen necessarily spirits yet physically. And I used to think that, okay, well, that means I'm not psychic, but I do feel things and I do know things about people when I read their tarot cards and I can feel like the energy. And, and I know, like, I kind of have that feeling where I'm being watched sometimes in my sleep. I'm like, oh, spirits in here. <laughs> But it's not like good or bad. And I have a very close relationship with my guides and with my animals and whatnot. And I can feel when I know that I'm always like protected. It's not scary anymore. But I feel like maybe like if you were younger, you might have had an experience with it and you thought it was a dream or mm -hmm. your parents told you it wasn't real. Like when you're younger, maybe. Because I know for me, I probably saw a lot, but I forgot all about it. I, like, I just forgot it. <laughs> yeah yeah i wish i had that experience but i at the same time i know if i have it i'd probably get like freaked out spooked yeah I, I feel like that too like if if you like straight up saw a spirit you'd be like oh so i think it like builds up too because like with my intuition and with my psychic abilities it was kind of like regular tarot readings and then i was reading in someone's past and then i was like seeing like flashbacks and then I was getting messages through my dreams and then messages through songs and now like I I can I saw my friend saw an orb literally while I was doing a live Facebook thing and I thought she was bullshitting she's like an orb just flew through past you and I was like nah 
She's like, it flew past again. I was like, no way. She's like, go to this timestamp. So I like went to it. I looked it up and I did see it. And it, and it, and it's, it was like this small and it was white and it was like, and it wasn't a bug because I can tell a bug. It wasn't a speck of dust. And I like looked, it was just going so fast. Like there's no possible way. And that's when I really started to think like, oh, this shit's real. Like I was like, oh, like physical evidence. So I think like your guides in the universe, they allow you to like do it step by step. That way you're not freaked out. And plus your belief builds up to it. Just like the spirituality and astrology, your belief builds up after you know your sun sign, your rising, your moon, other people's all together. All yeah. Builds up. yeah, that's how it is too with me, like reading uh, like tarots. I don't really, I try I don't really enjoy reading myself because it's really biased when I, when I read for myself, right. yeah. when I read for other people, it's on point. Like I did, um, I wanted to, uh, see your energy. What would it be like in this podcast <gasps> even recorded? And, um, it came up with the strength card upright. No, dude, I got that in two other readings today. The strength. What? Yeah. yeah dude, so. that's blowing my mind right now. But not because you're Scorpio rising. But the synchronicity, like literally, I, I, I watched a video. It's like how, like, what's coming up for you this upcoming year? And the strength card came out. And then another one, she's like, how do people see you? She's like, the strength card. And she's like, yeah, the strength card isn't just like, oh, you're strong, girl. This is a, a card of strength when, like, nothing else is there. Like, intense strength through shit, but you got this over and over. You're a strong-ass individual. And I was like, damn, this came up twice. I guess the strength card. And you will them do Like, what? Man, I want to go get my cards now. Just like, let's see what his yeah. is. <laughs> and then I want to see how my energy would be. And it's the Ten of Swords in reverse. Oh, that's good, then. Heck Very. yeah. I was like, if it was right side up, I'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> Are you okay? But yeah. That's good. So that means you just came out of probably a transformation or a betrayal or a lot of thing, a lot of trauma happening all at once, getting hit from every end. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I got from it as well. And um, I pulled one for uh, the overall vibe of this. Like, like I did your energy and my energy in this podcast, but I also pulled uh, the Three of Cups. Uh, for the overall vibe <gasps> celebration no dude that makes me so happy dude every time i have the three of cups like i explain to people i'm like these are like these friends that are going out and like drinking can be involved but it's not even about drinking it's just about that connection that friendship with someone where you forget about time you forget about your problems you're just having fun you're like you're vibing so dude what Oh yeah. That's so funny how you like pull it off. And then you showed it at the end, which is good. You didn't show it at the beginning and like, change it. Like this is what it is. Ah. Yeah, no. I had to hold it. I had to hold it back. Yeah, hold it back, dude. This whole time. Yeah, I feel like Scorpio Rising, we do that a lot. Like I find if I'm gonna like hang out with somebody or if I might be like attracted to someone or even with a job, I like I'm like a detective, <laughs> like, but I don't ever like to reach out to that person and like ask them questions. So I feel like, I don't know, dude, uh, I like to be in power. I like to be like the mysterious one and can't be mysterious. And be like, Oh, Hey, what's up? So like, I'll, I'll look, I'll look deep into like someone's pictures or like what they're about and like figure it all, even with like YouTubers that I follow or work, like, I don't know. I feel like I'd be doing a lot of spying, but it's so like, no one would ever know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yo, and we're naturals at it. Like, crazy. Scorpio rising shit. Well, we have been doing a podcast for like three hours. <laughs> yeah, a little more than I expected. Yeah, dude. Do you have anything else you wanted to add to it? Um, I think we covered, like, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really have anything else to say, to be quite honest. Well, this was a super amazing podcast. I think I'm going to end it here. Do you want me to like link all your soul 